There's little uh, Porky Rio and beans. I got pork and beans. Rio's the pork. But she's looking smaller and losing weight. And Beans is getting her in shape. Beans is always biting things. No, Bean. Come. Come. Leave it alone. And I think it's possible that her ears could stand. Look. Look. At, they're up. The ears are up. Sometimes they go up. They're small. And they appear to start uh, lifting slightly. Uh, about three months they start lifting. If they're going to start rising, I don't know for sure. We'll see. But they are small. And they are starting to rise a bit at the base. So they're not hanging like right on uh, the skin. Like fur to fur. There's like a little gap now. Like the lift. Hey, calm down. They're lifting more every day. Look at that little chubby bean. Okay, you settle down. Playing in the garden, that's what they do. And so far, Beanie has not been in this pond. And that's a good thing. Because she's getting pretty big. She just takes a drink. And uh, nobody goes in these ponds because it's quite a bit higher. And so they don't even notice them. Beanie mostly drinks from the bottom ponds. She'll just drink water, put her paws and drink while well, actually over there where Bear drinks. There's that big giant black koi. Look at him. Wow, he's beautiful. He's a black butterfly koi. And he's so big. And I can't catch him out of there, so he's just going to have to stay. So what I think happened, because for some reason I've got babies. i got babies all over this pond, and at night when the light's on, you can really see them good. A lot of them are still dark colored, but there are some that are colored. But um, these uh, three koi that I call the kamikaze koi, not those, that's a goldfish, that's a goldfish, there's the koi, there's the koi, and there's the koi. They were all babies, but they've really put on weight in the last year. And they were breeding like crazy with a goldfish, and now there's fish in here. And I don't normally get baby fish because of all the dragonfly nymphs, but I think those koi ate a lot of the nymphs before they ate the baby babies. That's probably what happened. I did have some blooms on here earlier, and there was a dragonfly exoskeleton, but I think it fell into the pond. They leave their exoskeletons behind, and uh, they're like a little shell when they leave the pond in the nymph stage. They'll shed their exoskeleton on, say, the plant, and then they'll uh, transform and unfold their wings, and they become about a beautiful dragonfly. So, yeah. But for some reason, there's not as many dragonflies down here because probably those big koi that are constantly hungry and grew mysteriously extra large uh, in the last year, I think they ate the babies. That's good. I mean the baby dragonflies in the nymph stage. And these are the medium-sized koi, and they're looking really good. I got... Uh, there's one that has like that one right there, black top, and he's got bluish bottom. He's hard to see now. And these are mostly all goldfish except for the one big uh, fantail koi, the black one. Or, sorry, uh, they call them um, butterfly koi. What is going on here? They're killing each other softly. Beanie's got Rio down on the ground. <laughs> run and play. I have to run to work. But at night, I'll see if I'll, I can get a better picture. I can really see the babies down here. There are some colored. Hopefully, they don't all get eaten. They're just kind of hard to see right now. But tonight, I'll put food in, and I'll see if I can lure them, and uh, then you'll be able to see. But yeah, all the ponds are looking really good. Let's take a look up here. I still have cherries on this cherry tree. 
And they're really good, too. Nice little cherries. Like a pin cherry, but very sweet right now. The hot summer made them sweeter. I was slowly topping up the water earlier. They get hungry and they start swirling when they see me. They move around looking for food. Yeah, and I've got uh, sumpkins, of course, and tomatoes, and a few other things growing here and there. And this isn't supposed to be here. I'll have to take it out. Weeds. I have to groom. There's a tree. Oh my. Can't stand the weeds. Yeah, so, Koi are doing well. And, um, well, the water is always nice and cool, no matter how hot it gets. I don't know. It's just because it's a, the pond, the bottom ponds have a lot of shade. They flow fast. The balls spin and help cool off the uh, pond. You know, they cool off the surface, right? Because if you have a still area of water like that doesn't move much in the sun, then it heats up fast, right? And you'll see algae, right? If you have an area that's quiet. But pretty much this whole pond ripples, the surface ripples, right? So there's not that quiet dead zone where the water uh, pockets of the surface water can overheat and then create like algae blooms and stuff. So that's uh, why I like the spinning balls. They uh, work good at that. And uh, like over here too, there's a lot of, it's a smaller ball, but there's a lot of surface tension. The whole water is rippling. You can see it's like little waves. So there's not a hot pocket. You can even see there the water is rippling. So it's good water movement, right? And then down here, I don't have the spinning ball there right now, but I'm getting lots of oxygenation and circulation. And you can see those pumps there. Those are the easy biofilters. There's some hornwort over there and a bit of algae, but it gets caught in there, right? And this uh, filter doesn't hurt the hornwort. And uh, there's like two easy bio sil filters connected together and two over there. And they connect with the T to the pump. Now the sun moved away. Oh, real. And there's also two easy bio filters down in this pond. Plus there is also a another uh, pump with a Laguna filter. Okay, settle down, kids. Rio's getting her exercise. Oh my. And that's today, the puppies. Oh, and there's baby fish. And it's a beautiful day in Canada.